What is up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out Claro. This is not just your typical EQ from Sonux. This is really one of the coolest EQ plugins I've seen in a long time. There's so much functionality to get you clean instrument tracks, clean mixes, and just an overall better sonic soundscape for whatever project you're working on. In this video, I'm just gonna walk you through what it has to offer. And if you're interested, go ahead and click the link in the video description to check it out on pluginboutique.com. So there are three different pages inside of Claro. The produce page is a very simple EQ slash stereo with control. Now, the purpose of the produce page is when you're in the middle of making a project and you wanna keep moving along, you might wanna make some subtle or just some quick EQ decisions, but you wanna keep going with your creativity and worry about mixing and mastering later. So what we have here is essentially three different bands or three different filters to choose from. There are some quick access points along the frequency spectrum, and these are inspired by classic analog EQs. So I've got mine set to 100, but I can easily drop it down to 70. And while the music's playing, let me go ahead and actually solo this channel. You'll see that we've got a heat map here. Now, not only do we have a heat map, but we also have vocab words to help us with what we're trying to do. In the lower frequencies here, where your sub and your bass would be, you can expect rumble or wait. So these words can help you determine what you're doing when you add or take away from that frequency range. Here between 100 and 1K, we've got warmth and mud. So warmth is generally considered a good thing, while mud is considered a bad thing. And then we have definition and harshness. And then over here, we have air as well. As I said, we've got three different filter bands or filters to choose from. And then we can also turn the low and the high into a shelf if we want just by clicking on it. And again, if we look in the GUI here, you'll see that right now it's sort of bold next to the 70. And by the way, we can move this if we wanna do uh, an exact value that isn't on sort of the preset list down here. And you could also double click to bypass any one of them. So if we don't actually need all three, and we can turn that into a shelf as well. And when I turn it into the shelf, you'll see that the line is bold just on the left side there. So it gives you a good idea visually of what it is if you're not paying attention to this. So any changes I make here, let's say I, I boost up the low end here. Once I go into the tweak page, those are all be reflected here. And now I can add up to 26 total filters inside of the tweak page. And this is more of your standard EQ that you might be familiar with. Although there's a lot of great functionality there as well. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. But when I jump back in here, I also wanna point out the auto gain function and an auto gain freeze function. What it's gonna do is listen to the frequency spectrum of the audio that's being run through Claro and decide intelligently if it needs to boost the gain or reduce the gain to keep the mix at the same level. And I have to say it does a really good job. Now, most auto gain features that you may have encountered in something like a limiter use a pink noise frequency spectrum to determine how loud or how quiet it should make the output depending on what you're doing to the sound. But Claro actually uses the frequency, as I've said, that comes into the plugin. So it's doing it a much more dynamic way. And that's what allows you to make frequency cuts and boosts without reducing or increasing the output. And you can really focus on the timbre changes, especially with this guitar here, if you listen. That's a 40 decibel boost to 700 hertz. And it's really changing the timbre of the track rather than if I turn off auto gain, listen to what happens. I mean, that's just a completely different sound. Okay, so that's the basic tone, but if I flip over to width, the heat map becomes pink and the brighter spots have more stereo width than the darker parts. And the, obviously the part that has no pink, there is nothing happening. So again, very helpful feature to see visually and be able to hear with that auto gain function enabled to increase stereo width.
Moving from there to the tweak page, as I've said, this is kind of your standard EQ layout. One thing that is very, very cool about Claro is as I increase the Q value here or decrease it, the frequency spectrum will actually adapt to how wide or how narrow that is. Because if it's super narrow, you're gonna to wanna to see more spikes and a more precise frequency spectrum. And if they're pretty wide, you actually don't need to see those and it will give you the kind of more of a general overview. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you can see there that it's a pretty kind of general sense of the EQ curve. Watch what happens as I increase the Q value of this filter node. And when I'm super short or super narrow with the EQ curve, it will start highlighting resonance peaks for me, which is a good way if you've got a resonance issue to find them and eliminate them. Or if you're looking to boost harmonics, it's a good way to do it as well. I think that is really, really cool and super, super helpful, especially when you're trying to find an issue inside of a mix or a bus or a channel. The frequency nodes themselves have a ton of options. If I right click here, I can bypass or I can choose my filter type. And I can also choose to do left, right, stereo, mid or side. And I can actually split the left and the right channel and rebalance something if there's an issue. Maybe something's pushed too far to the left and I want to bring it to the center. I can actually just bring down that left channel and leave the right channel alone and begin to mix things that way as well. Lots of functionality there. And then I can get rid of any sort of filter node I want just by clicking that X and boom goes the dynamite. Really, really nice. Also, we have weight, warmth, body presence, definition, and air. These are kind of positive things you're looking for. So if I want a bigger body in my mix, I'm going to come around here and look for what I can do to that frequency range. Down here at the bottom would be considered negative things like rumble, boom, mud, nasal, if you're dealing with vocals, harshness, and hiss. Now there's also a keyboard up here as well. So if I know a certain key of my track and I, you know, let's say right here, if I double click, it will automatically put a filter node on that key. And then I can easily take the gain slider over here and make it a cut instead of a boost. And I'm using my mouse wheel to adjust the Q value there. And when I soloed it, you can solo it by using the headphones down here. Now, let's talk about low cuts here because this is something else I've never seen in an EQ. If I double click to add a node, right click, come into low cut. Let's go ahead and bring it down. Watch how big. I can go up to 120 decibel drop off there. That is essentially, you're not going to get much more of a brick wall than 120. I think the most I've ever seen is 96. That is a super fast drop off. It's very, very helpful when you're doing precision based mixing and you need there to be nothing in the low end, for example. Now it doesn't stop there. This is my favorite page inside of Claro. It's the mix page and it will show you every instance of Claro you have in your project. And I have it on every channel in the project and on every bus or group in the project and on my return track. And a cool thing about this, right? If you're going to be using Claro for mixing, a lot of DAW have the functionality where you can add a plugin to multiple channels at once. Unfortunately, Ableton Live doesn't have that capability. But if you have Logic, Studio One, Cubase, Pro Tools, Reaper, for example, you can easily add Claro to every channel if you want with just a couple clicks. Also, depending on your DAW, it will automatically know if that instance is in a group or a bus, or if it's on a single track, or if it's on a return track. Inside of Ableton Live, again, it's breaking my heart, but Ableton Live doesn't have that. However, Claro is smart enough to recognize the title of the group. So if you see down here at the bottom, I can see tracks, buses, and effects. So let's say I've already EQ'd my individual tracks and I'm looking just to do a more in-depth mix of the group. So I've got my drums, I've got my guitars and harmonics, and then I've got my pads. What I can do is remove tracks from the list. And now you can see here that these are my groups. 
and I can have one group in focus, and that will be the top one here. For example, if I do the pimp, uh, pump synth group, it will pull that up, and then I can reference that with another one. For example, additional melodics, I can click and drag and drop that down there. And then when I play it, watch what happens. You see those yellow highlights? That's telling me there are frequency collisions or masking happening. And it's a place that we might want to check out when we're doing our mixing. Now, masking isn't always bad, but it's very, very helpful that Clara will tell you where that masking is happening and you can jump in and make decisions. Now, another great feature, I'm just telling you there's so many great features about this EQ, is this invert EQ. If I turn that on, right, and I look for my masking and I make a cut up here to the pump synth group, it will make a boost down here automatically for me. And what you'd want to do, right, is solo those two groups if you really want to get, you know, your head around what it's doing to the mix, bypass, make your changes, and so forth. But it's just so much easier than having to have two plugin windows open. And then if I'm ready to compare my pump synth to my subgroup, I just click that and put that down there. And you can see here, it's gonna show me the frequency collisions between these two. Nothing else in the mix, just those two. And it's just phenomenal. And it's a huge boost to workflow. And if I come over here, you can actually see the heat maps. Whatever is in focus here, you'll see the frequency collisions happening on all of the EQs at once. So you'll know, you know, you know I have my sub bass group, I need to jump in there to do a little bit of cleaning up maybe. So you can see that I have inside of my additional melodics group, I have the bleed guitar in the Janty Rhodes. And the Janty Rhodes and the, the bleed guitar are actually where most of the frequency collisions are happening. So that's something I'd wanna pull in here and really you know, decide if those frequency collisions or that masking is causing an issue. But I can also see if there's a group or individual tracks, and it, it's gonna show me those for whatever's in focus. And I just find that so helpful. So you can see that my haps and claps are not conflicting with anything. So from a technical standpoint, those are perfectly fine inside of the mix. And the cool thing is, I don't ever have to close this and bring up something else. All of the instances of Claro are here and I can manipulate each one of them, move them, do whatever I want to them, right from this one instance of Claro, no matter which one it is that I have open. Absolutely phenomenal. So just one other thing, I mentioned it briefly. Claro is intelligent enough to, to recognize your group. So if I title it group or bus, it will keep them in the buses tab. So if I get rid of my effects and my buses, I'll just see that. For Claro to recognize your groups, you have to title them somewhere in the title with group, bus, submix as one word, submix as two words, or submix with a hyphen in between the sub and the mix. For effects, like your return tracks, if you have the the word reverb, verb, hall, plate, spring, chamber, ambience, echo, delay, effects, FX, the letters, or aux, or return, it will automatically add them to the effects grouping, where again, you could just focus on what's happening there, and everything else will just fall under track. Again, it's, the workflow is phenomenal. The filters sound great. You have more than enough functionality, lots of different filter types, up to 26 filter nodes. And this masking and just the compare and contrast of the two EQ curves, the adaptive revolution of the frequency spectrum, just there's just so much to really like about Claro. I highly recommend this if you're looking to make better mixes or if you're a mixing and mastering engineer or you aspire to be, Claro is definitely something you want to check out. Anyway, links will be in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video video.